evening, folks, and welcome to Dragon Stadium on the campus of Lake Orion High School, where the NFHS Network and ONTV are proud to present Varsity Boys Lacrosse between the Macomb Dakota Cougars and your Lake Orion Dragons. I'm Anthony Schulte, joined here today by my partner and, bar and bro my broadcast part partner, excuse me, Jamison Fanning. Hello. Tonight, the 8-2 and two Dragons look to create some momentum after a 15-2 win against Romeo, and the Cougars look to extend their winning streak past two games and break 500 for the first time this season. Jamie, what do the Dragons need to do this evening to secure their ninth win of the season? Well, it's a simple word. It's one word. Defense. The Dragons have shown that their offense is impeccable. I mean, you've got Kyle Winters, you've got Luke Gannon, you've got Andrew Parker. I mean, these guys can easily score four to five goals a game. Like, it's nothing. The issue is, when the Dragons lose, it's because... It's not because they couldn't score, because they're still high-scoring games. Yes. It's because they couldn't stop the other team from scoring. So what really needs to happen is that the defense, the midfielders as well, and the goalie really just need to basically form a stone wall, so to say. They need to yeah. form, like, a brick wall and keep the enemy... <laughs> the enemy, I guess, as I apparently said. They have to keep the other team on their side. They have to keep up the offense and make sure that when the enemy does get over here and when we are on the defense, that we quickly shift it back over to the offense. And that's what I think Lake Orion is good at. So I think we're a good team. I expect a good game today. But we'll see what happens, you know? We'll see what happens. The starters tonight as face-off just commences at center field. On the attacks, number one, Andrew Parker, number 22, Luke Gannon, number 28, Kyle Winter. Midfielders and forwards consist of number six, Parker oh. Gannon. Already starting off with a collision. Big hit right there. Continuing with our starters, number 21, Sam Haynes, number 35, Jackson Vasquez. Defenseman, number 20, Blake Liddell, 25, Joseph Diani, 58, Justin Jacoloni, and the goalie, number nine, Brady Gerritsen. So already seeing some big hits here, Jamie, aren't we? Uh, understatement, so to say. <laughs> it, it looked more like a football tackle than anything else, I'm going to be honest. So it'll be a 30-second penalty here. Dakota's got it on their side. Carter Cole's got the ball now. Down to Cole. Cole shoots, and he's just off right there. That'll be out of play. And here come the Cougars. A couple shots on goal. Miss right there, and the ball will be out of play once more. It's interesting. I... I can't really find a definitive strategy right now. Like a uh, specific, like it doesn't look like they're doing specifically a three-three or a two-two-two mm -hmm. attack. Like they're just there, right? So to say. Good defense here from the Dragons, as you alluded to. Dragons need to play good defense here tonight. Cougars got it right now. They're gonna go over to number one, Jake Ferguson. Ferguson. Gets it over to Noah Erickson. Erickson over to Cole. The ball will be loose and it will be picked up by the Dragons. Garrison's got it. Couple passes back and forth. Garrison will find Dominic Novak. Jackaloni now. Dragons have it on their side. Looking to get a quick and early score here. Andrew Parker now. Dakota playing some solid defense here. Haynes. It's over to Kyle Winter. Winter gives it over to Andrew Parker. Shot on goal right there from Luke, from Luke Gannon. Just off. Another shot right there from Gannon. That's off. And they're going to get a goal right there. Just bounced off the goalie stick. Looked like a save from up here in the press box. Luke Gannon gets the Dragons on the board first. 1-0 Lake Orion. 
I mean, doesn't always need to be a flashy goal, you know? Doesn't always need to be flashy, whatever puts points on that board. Mm -hmm. If that so happens to be it, basically, it, it looked like it went into the goalie's stick and then just bounced out. That's yeah. what it looked like, at least to me. I don't know if that's what you saw. But I, mean, I hey. saw it hit the stick, and that's all I saw. And then I saw the referees put his hands up, goal. and there you go. Loose ball now around midfield, and the Cougars will have it. Here's number eight, Drew Astorga. Astorga gets it over to Noah Erickson. Erickson gets around a defender. Gives it back out to Jake Ferguson. Ball's loose and Lake Orion has it. Dragons take over on a turnover right there. Here's Andrew Parker. Parker now trying to look for a hole. Gets it behind the net. They'll get all the way out. They'll reset right here. Some substitutions about ready to check in. Number 18, or excuse me, yes, number 18. And number six, Parker Gannon, check in for the Dragons, excuse me. Cougars will have it. This is Aiden Critiser. Over in the lose possession, picked up by the Dragons. Here comes Carson Negri. Gets it over, tries to get it to Evan Kelly. Can't quite pick it up. Ball's loose, like Orin will retain possession. And there'll be a whistle. Substitutions coming in. Trying to see who that is for Lake Orion here. Looks to be number 27, Joseph Debrinkit. Cougars have it now. Out of Macomb, Dakota, and that ball will go out of play. So some good defense here from the Dragons to start, something that you, you alluded to earlier that they need to kind of focus on this game to try and secure a win here. Absolutely. That's what I brought up was going to be the big thing, and so far it's been working. Uh, the Dragons have been keeping up the defense. They've been... I mean, part of that I do also believe is that Dakota's offense seems very disorganized. I cannot tell exactly what they're... And well, as we talk mind, about defense... <laughs> as we talk about defense, Macomb, Dakota will get a score here. <laughs> uh, it says the saying goes, speak of the devil and it shall occur. Number four, Aiden Critiser will get awarded that goal. We'll have a face-off at center field. 7-12 and 12 left to go here in this first quarter. We're all tied up at 1. We'll say, I, I couldn't tell what their offense was doing, but uh, whatever it was, it seems to have worked. It worked. It's Maybe that's really the strategy. Confuse, your, confuse yeah. the defense with them not understanding what your strategy is, and there it goes. So Dakota will pick it up here. They'll have a substitution. Noah Erickson will get it out behind the net to Carter Cole. Cole gets it over. Alec Carr. He's got it for the Cougars. Jake Brender gets it back out to Carl. Or Carr, excuse me. Dragons playing a little physical here. Shot on goal right there by Noah Erickson, just off. Ball bouncing around. Good job there from Brady Gerritsen. Currently has possession. He's going to get it up. All the way out to number 35, Jackson Vasquez. Vasquez. Ball right now with Luke Gannon. Andrew Parker now gets it out. Jackson Vasquez 
He'll get over to Sam Haynes. Haynes running in, looking to find a crease. Can't get it behind the goal. Andrew Parker. Parker tries to get it out to his teammate right there, Luke Gannon, but that ball will roll out of play. Hmm. So you've seen a couple sloppy plays here I, to start from Lake Orion. On Lake Orion and Adams as well, but definitely on Lake Orion, I feel like there's been a lot of like passes that should have easily been made. Yeah. They were rather close. Both people had their sticks at the ready, and yet... For some reason, something went wrong. And I, I think that's been sort of their Achilles heel so far in this game specifically is that sure. they've been giving Dakota the ball when they really don't have the right to it, when it should still be the Dragon's ball. There's no real reason for them to have given it up. They weren't really challenged for it. They just messed up. Good physical defense right there, and the Dragons will cause another turnover. So you're seeing some sloppy plays on both sides of the field here. And I will say, the Dragons, though, when they get the ball, they are able to make a good run. Vasquez gives it over to Kyle Winter. Winter now. Get the ball pa right past the goal. Up to number six, Parker Gannon have what appears to be a 2-2-2 two, two, two offense going on. Two behind the goal, two in front of the goal, and two a little bit back behind. Fairly good because it gives you the abilities both to be strong on the attack, but if the other team gets the ball, it does have two players at the back ready to fall back and help defend. So, a rather neutral, I'd say. That'll be a goal right there from number 39, Cole Kelly. Goal number 39, Cole Grimes. So, a Lake Orion will take the lead right here on a goal. Cole Kelly gets credited with that. 2-1, to one, Lake Orion with 4-21 and 21 left to go here in the first quarter. On a very chilly evening here at Lake Orion High School. So a face-off will commence shortly at midfield. Some early offense indeed here. At midfield, and the Cougars will try to take possession. A big hit right there, Alec Fisher delivering. At least scooped up by Aaron Lights. Luke Gannon's got it, gets it over to Cole Kelly. Kelly back out to Kyle Winter. Winter. Gets it out, and Lake Orion will reset here. Next move, Michael Bonham. He'll fall, and the ball will go out of play. A 30 second penalty here. Man up for Lake Orion. Lake Orion has a man up. Always nice to see. You know, that's always what you want as a yeah. team. You're going to want effectively a power play because that's going to mean there's going to be less people on the defense. Jackson Vasquez. So that'll be behind the goal. Or to Andrew Parker. Parker gives it up to Michael Bonham. And Bonham will miss. Cougars have possession. And he'll get tripped up right there. Number 12, that's Logan Kratiser. So that'll be a flag. And some more substitutions here for Lake Orion. Three and 13 left to go here in this first quarter. On one, one so that penalty will go on number one, Andrew Parker. We're going to continue to play some lacrosse here. <laughs> Would never number thought. five, Noah Erickson. Erickson gives it out to Aiden Kreiser. 
Ferguson gets it back to call. Ball's loose, and the Dragons will scoop it up. But it'll go out of play. Saved. But given to the other team. And it goes <laughs> right to back to the Cougars. Almost went out of play there. So right now, Call's got it. Trey Edwards gives it out back to Noah Erickson. Erickson gives it up to Aiden Kreitzer. Kreitzer now. Kreitzer will shoot in a good save right there. Brady Garrettson. Wow, what a play right there. Exactly what I brought up in the beginning before the game starts. What we need is a good goalie, and, well, what have we got? There he is. We've got a good goalie. Brady Garrettson right there with a nice save. He'll get the ball up to Jack Aloney. This is Justin Jack Aloney here for Lake Orion. Over to Jackson Vasquez. Vasquez gave it up to Kyle Winter. He'll give it back to Andrew Parker. Winter now has it. 1-20. and 20. Left to go here in this first quarter. Winter will tri Winter trips, excuse me, and gives it out. 35 Jackson Vasquez. Vasquez looks to make a move. He shoots, he scores! Jackson Vasquez on the goal for Lake Orion. And that'll make it a three to one game here with one and three left to go in the first quarter. So Lake Warren's offense heating up early, as we alluded to. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you want to see. Keeping strong on the defense while having their offense be able to push up and do what they need to do. I mean, it's only 3-1 to one right now. It's not some yeah. of the blowout leads that we've seen before, but hey, there's still three quart a minute and three quarters left to go, so yeah. we'll see where this goes. Jamison Ray for the Dragons taking the faceoff against Jake Ferguson. The Dragons will retain. Here comes Ray. There'll be a whistle on the field. We have a timeout for Lake Orion. With 54 seconds left to go in the first, timeout Lake Orion. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch LOHS sports and events all year. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and nearly half of the subscription money goes back to our LOHS program. Tune in online at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. So we're seeing some defense here early for the Dragons, other than that one goal they gave up earlier here in the first. We're also seeing a lot of good offense, a lot of good crafty goals, but you can't really define the Cougars' offense so far, can you? No, not really, because their one goal that they got there was no real defined strategy. It really looked at... It looked it, like it, luck. It, 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 looked, it, it looked like they shot, and they were like, hey, What it looked it. like was they just tried to get somebody in front yeah. of the goal, throw the ball in, and hope that it gets in. It didn't really seem like there was as much defined, def defined strategy and tactics to it. Mm -hmm. It looked like it just sort of happened. Whereas in the with the Dragons, you're seeing like a usually a 2-2-2 two, two, two strategy, like a specific defi defined tactic that you would normally see in lacrosse. And... I mean, that's played out with them having two more goals up on the Cougars. So the Dragons do head into this game 8-2, and two, as I mentioned earlier in this broadcast, led by head coach Ron Hebert. And earlier this year against Birmingham United, he got his 313th win, Jamie. Yeah, making him the coach in Mich with Michi uh, the Michigan high school coach in lacrosse with the most wins. The most wow. winningest coach in high school across I said Michigan. that really terribly. I could have just said it like that. <laughs> you could have, but hey, you know what? The message still got delivered. What a great career for Ron Hebert, and he's continuing it this year. Eight and he two is not a not, bad record. He's made it there, and he is not slowing down. Dragons currently sitting at, or Hebert currently sitting at 319 total wins as the Dragons will start out the timeout Looking on offense. The Parker passes it back to Winter. Excuse me, that's 39, Cole Grown. And a goal. And another goal right there for the Dragons. Looks to be a Andrew Parker, one of their leading scorers on this team, gives the Dragons yet another tally before the quarter end. 
I mean, it's exactly what you want to see. Like, it was a far-out goal, but it was a good goal. He just took a far-out shot, and it landed beautifully, and the goalie wasn't prepared for it. I mean, you can't ask for much better, you know? Exactly. Alec Fisher taking the face-off for the Dragons. There's another whistle down on the field. Some more substitutions. Checking in for the Cougars looks to be number zero, Alex Carr. Ferguson will give it up to Carr. And he'll lose the ball from behind. Great play from Alex Fisher there, but he'll retain possession. It's number four, Aiden Kreitzer. The Dragons with another forced turnover. That seems to be a big theme here in this first quarter. And they'll throw the ball downfield. And at the end of quarter one, the Dragons will take a three-point lead, four to one, into this break. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy Enjoy the the game. game! Welcome back to Dragon Stadium here on the campus of Lake Orion High School. Anthony Schulte alongside Jamison Fanning here tonight. Still here. <laughs> we, are exp- we are watching a, a really good game. A lot of good defensive plays. Lake Orion causing a lot of turnovers. Absolutely. They're playing aggressively on the defense, and that's the kind of defense you need if you want to be a team like Lake Orion and have the wins you have where it's like 13-1 to 1 and you've got yeah. a double-digit lead. You need your defense to be good on the turnovers, be able to effectively bully the other side's offense into giving you the ball so that you can just get back onto the offense. I mean... Stealing points, an effective strategy in any sport, really. Fair. <laughs> We're about ready to start the second quarter of action here. Again, Lake Orion up 4-1, to one, up by 3. Early lead here for Ron Hebert's team. Jamison Ray will be taking... The face-off for the Dragons against number one Jake Ferguson of Macomb, Dakota. And we are underway here in the second quarter. And the Dragons will start off with possession. Jamison Ray, yet another take on the face-off. He's up to Sam Haynes. Haynes has it. Sam Haynes looking for room, trying to get past his defender. They're sending a double team. Haynes gets over. That's a shot on goal right there from number 18. Number 18. <laughs> Gives it up to Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes. Shot a goal, he scores! The Dragons, one more goal added on to the tally. Sam Haynes, one of their leading scorers. And that's what? Looks to be uh, 38 seconds? 38 seconds into, <laughs> into the, the second quarter? There's that quick math right there, Jamie. 38 <laughs> seconds Not into usually the something I'm good quarter. with. I'm surprised I was able to pull it off here, folks. <laughs> Alec Fisher jogging onto the field to take the face off here after that Sam Haynes goal. Dragons offense starting to heat up, especially towards the end of that first quarter, now going into the second quarter. Ball rolling down towards Lake Orion's goal. will be picked up right there by Aiden Kreitzer. Bodies on the ground. Kreitzer retains possession. And he'll get it across midfield. And it'll be picked up almost. And the ball will keep on rolling and saved by the Cougars. Gets it out. Carter Cole. 
I mean, a shot on goal right there and a score from number four, Aiden Kreideser. So Macomb, Dakota answers quick with a goal of their own. Yep, 32 seconds after the other one. So we're seeing goals every 30 seconds here. <laughs> hey, that's what I like to see. Let's keep it action-packed. So some quick action here starting off this second. Jamison Ray, one more time. He'll take it in the face-off at midfield. Up against Jake Ferguson of the Cougars. And Jameson Way will win it once more. Here he comes. Jameson Way. He'll give it out to number 39, Cole Grone. Excuse me, I was calling him Cole Kelly earlier this broadcast. That is indeed not his name. So some, re so some new substitutions here onto the field. Sam Haynes has got it near the 40-yard line if we're talking football. Out to Parker. Andrew Parker, one of the Dragons' leading scorers, makes his move, gives it out. Sam Haynes, nice move there. Shot on goal, just off. It'll be out of play. Here come the Cougars, number 34, Dom DeMesa. They'll send on some more substitutions here. Dragons send on two more. Macomb, Dakota, again, you can't really tell their offense, but it's gotten them two early goals. It has. So, I mean, even if you can't exactly tell what it is, you can't really knock it, can you? Can't. Here's Jake Ferguson. Ferguson gets it out to Carr. Carr tries to get it in to Noah Erickson. Ball on the ground, picked up by the Dragons, Brady Garrettson. He's done a great job in goals so far here today. He'll give it up to Dom Novak. Novak and Garrettson playing catch. And Garrettson will give it up to Nolan Paquette. Paquette gets it down. To 22, Luke Gannon. Parker Gannon now. He's got it for the Dragons. As Andrew Parker will take a breather. Freshly subbed in. Jackson Vasquez. Down Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes tries to loop around. Gives it up. That's a shot. He scores! That's number 22, Luke Gannon. And that gets the Dragons another tally. His second goal of the night. Second goal of the night right there this, for Gannon. This is something I love about lacrosse. And, I mean, it, it also is with um, Dakota and how he said that we can't really tell what their offense is doing. I love the fluidity of the game. Like, there's yeah. no... There are positions, but, I mean, they're as simple as being an attacker, being uh -huh. a midfielder, and being a defender. There is fluidity. You have the ability to move really anywhere on the field at any given time, and it allows you to come up with some very interesting plays that really there's infinite possibilities. So the Dragons' two losses this season came against Clarkson 14-10 to and Heartland 13-2. to Couldn't really get the offense going against Heartland, but that's really one of their only games this year. That, that seems to be more of an exception than it is the yes, rule. Yes, exactly. It's one of their only games this year they couldn't really get the offense going. And, of course, no team's going to be perfect. Every team has their off days. Every it's just team a has their It's off a simple days. fact of sports. There's a whistle of some confusion on the field here. More substitutions for the Dragons. For 25, Joseph Diani, he joins back in the game. Number 44, Evan Kelly. This will be Cougar possession. Here comes Jake Ferguson. Ferguson gave it up to Noah Erickson. Here's Erickson taking it behind the net. Gave it up to Call. It's 
some very wet conditions out here as the rain is really coming down. And a steal from Lagoyne, another forced turnover. Here comes Evan Kelly. Evan Kelly now has it. He'll give it up, backside. The Dragons will reset, give it up to Vasquez. Dragons will send another substitution on here. Number 11, Zach Jones. Here comes Vasquez. Vasquez now. He'll shoot. Ah, oh, and a good save right there. From number 30, Dylan Porter, the Cougar goalie. Scooped up. Big hit right there. Dom Novak laying out a big hit. And there'll be a flag on the play. Looks like it was too big of a hit. A little too big of a hit there from Dom Novak. Dragons playing physical, though. You love to see a little bit of physical play here. Absolutely. The reason they've been able to have such a dominant offense is they've been willing to be aggressive. Yeah. It almost makes me think of, and this might be a bit of a stretch, but it almost reminds me of, say, like, the Detroit Lions and their new, like, villains mantra. Sure. They're yeah. willing to be, like, the aggressive team. They're willing to be the quote-unquote bad guys if they have to be, if that's what it takes to win. And that's, that's something I like about this Lake Orion team. They're not afraid to be more aggressive if they have to be. Edwards starts it out. Trey Edwards, that is. Gets it up to Jake Ferguson. Ferguson gets it to Carr. Or Noah Erickson, excuse me. Ball loose. And it'll be scooped up by Lake Orion. Here we go. Aaron Lights. Get it up. It'll be behind the goal right here with Luke Gannon. Gannon gives it up to Hayes. Haynes. Parker Gannon's got it up top. On Lake Orion's side of the field here. Here comes Parker Gannon. Gets it over. Kyle Winter gives it back out to Haynes. Sam Haynes gives it up. He shoots. He scores. Goal right there from Luke Gannon. I mean, Luke Gannon's second goal of the evening. I believe that's his third. third I just goal? forgot to write it down because I only have the five there written down. His third Whoopsie. goal of the evening, excuse me. And the rain is starting to really come down here at Dragon Stadium. Jamison Ray, he'll take the face off. Here at midfield. And Jamison Ray, he'll win it again, it looks like. Yes, sir. Scoop up for the Dragons. Here we go. Ray running with it. We got a whistle and a timeout here from Lake Orion. Timeout Lake Orion. They're up 7 to 2 with 5 and 19 left to go here in the first. In the here, second, excuse me. Here are five good reasons for high school multi sport participation fewer overuse injuries, less opportunity for emotional burnout, exposure to different kids and coaches, exposure to different roles, and learning to compete better. Being a multi-sport participant can help a kid become a more well-rounded person. Multi-sport participation is cross-training for life. Learn more at the MHSAA website. Playing a lot of sports definitely does help as we're back here at Dragon Stadium. Weather hasn't been on our side here tonight, so to say. It's what you expect out of a Michigan spring, you know? Really, it's it is. It's wet. It's, it's cold. cold. It's cold. It's dark. It just doesn't look comfortable out there. It does not. And, I mean, lacrosse is already a sport where it's so fast-paced that it can be hard to always tell what's going on, yeah. especially when you're on the offense, you're there in the moment, your first mm -hmm. thought isn't where is everybody else, and then you add in the darkness and it's wet, so the rain could be obstructing your vision as well. It's a little cold out there. It becomes a bit of a mess, so to yeah. say. 
But so far, our dragons have been able to do well with it still. Yeah. They've been able to, you know, keep to their wits, keep to their guts, you know, and just push through it. Dragons up 7-2 to two here, just coming out of this timeout. You see the Dragons be really uh, aggressive here tonight and Absolutely. really create a lot of turnovers. We keep harping on the a lot of turnovers, but turnovers turn into points. Absolutely. I mean, they're living up to their mascot name as the Dragons. Yes. Like, not to say that Cougars aren't imposing, but I mean, <laughs> if you put the two in a room together, who are you betting on to win? Right. Probably not the Cat. Fast Cassie's going to get it. Over to Parker Gannon. Get it up, Haynes. Haynes gives it out. Vasquez, he shoots, and that's a good save right there by the goalie. The third to Dylan Porter. And that's going to be a score right there. What a goal. By number 18. Who's not on our roster? There, there is no number 18 on the roster, folks. If if you have been wondering why we keep just saying number 18, it's because the roster goes straight from 17 to 20. It does. Who this ghost player is, I do not know, but I will say he has been doing wonders, so keep at it. Also, I really I like that goal because you saw like it looked like it went in. Yeah. The goalie had it, he lost it, and then number 18 just took it and threw it in. Right. Quick wits sometimes was, gets you really far. It was astonishing to see, quite confusing at that. Alec Fisher taking the face off right here. It'll be scooped up. Ball bouncing around, and the Dragons will retain it. Retained by Carson Negri. Negri will give it up. Sam Haynes. You've seen Sam Haynes a lot on offense. They're one of their mainstays there on the offensive side of the field. Up to Cole Grone. He'll give it out to Zach Jones. Jones trying to get past his defender here. Gives it out to Sam Haynes. Haynes, he'll turn around, he'll fire, and it's just off. And that'll roll out of play. Seen a lot of shots on goal also here tonight. And there's number 18. <laughs> number 18, Kobe Narlock. So excuse us for that roster got him now. blunder. But yes, there have been a lot of shots on goal. I mean, for better or for worse. Is the sun peeking through? So there's a goal right there for the Dragons. By number 6, Parker Gannon. Welcome to the Goal Club here tonight. Lake Orion's up 9-2 to two with 3-51 and 51 left to go here in the first half. Okay, so seven things just happened at once, and I'm very discombobulated right now. It is an eventful scene right here so we got at Dragon 18. Stadium. But, my God, that is actually the sun. I, I was expecting it to just get through. darker and darker. So this is definitely a welcome sight. Also a good goal by Gannon. That was an amazing goal, beautiful goal there. Jameson Ray. And he can't quite win the faceoff this time. Gets a little physical up there. And there's the flag. Here's number one, Jake Ferguson. Ferguson will give it up to Carter Cole. Cole out to Erickson. We'll give it back to Cole. They're playing catch right now, Cole and Erickson. Erickson will give it up. To Dylan Giard. Is Erickson? Give it up to Cole. Cole trying to get around his defender. Give it up. And a goal right there. Dylan Giard checks into the game and gets a goal for the Cougars. So if anyone was confused on why play continued as the uh, flag was thrown, in lacrosse, uh, if the fou the team that the foul was, I guess, committed against, if they still retain the ball, the referees will let the play keep going until either the other team gets it or it goes out of bounds, or in this case, a goal is scored yes. in, in an attempt to effectively not hurt the team that was already 
a foul was already committed against. They don't yeah. want to hurt them anymore, so they're going to let them continue playing. Because I know that's different from other sports, so for a first-time viewer, that might be a bit strange to see. But that's just the cross for you. So Diani and Ferguson at the center field for the face-off. And the Cougars will retain. Edwards gives it up to Ferguson. Over to Erickson. Back out. Here's Kreidiser. Aiden Kreidiser. Out to Edwards. Back to Kreidiser. Down low. They'll lose the ball and it'll roll. Will it be saved here? Let's see. Not quite. Nope. Good effort right there from Noah Erickson. An attempt was made. An attempt was made indeed. So here we go. Dragon's going to try and add one more onto their tally and cross double digits. Logan Little will give it up there to Luke Gannon. Gannon's got it. Gives it out to Cole Grohn. Grohn gives it back out. Parker Gannon now. Gannon gets past his defender here. Parker Gannon. And he'll lose the ball. Logan Kreidiser. Here we go. Number four, Aiden Kreidiser. We'll get the Cougars started here on their side. And some more substitutions here for the Cougars. Looks to be Dylan Giard, who has their last goal. There's a back out, number seven, Jake Brender. Brender out to Alex Carr. Carr trying to get past his defender. That'll be retained by the Dragons. Good job there from Joseph Diani. Diani will give it back out to Brady Gerritsen. Gerritsen will give it up to Blake Liddell. Here comes Jack Aloni. Are we have an offsides penalty here, Jamie. Not what I was expecting. Looks like Jack only went offsides there. So here come the Cougars. And in Kreider, sir, it looks to, looks to have the ball here. A rather rare penalty in the sport, I'll be honest. Yeah. Kreider, sir, trying to make a move. Gets it back to call. Call out. Over to Jake Brender. Two seconds. It doesn't look like they'll get a goal off as time expires here in the first half. All zeros on the scoreboard and Lake Orion's up six, nine to three. We're going to send it to this break. This is your home for Dragon Sports. <laughs> There are very few traditions in our country as enduring, engaging, and meaningful as high school football on Friday nights. Every Friday night in the fall, about 7,000 high school football games involving more than one million student athletes are held from coast to coast. Football has been a part of our nation's high schools for more than 100 years. High school football fosters a strong sense of community. It is the most popular boys sport and is our nation's number one spectator sport. The people in the stands aren't just fans. They're moms and dads, grandparents, sisters and brothers. They're local store owners and neighbors from down the street. They're former players and coaches and their fellow students. Win or lose, their support and pride for their school and community are always there. Why play high school football? High school football equips young people for success in both the classroom and in life by inspiring character, leadership, resilience, teamwork, 
discipline, physical fitness, time management, community engagement, and other important life skills. Also through football, students develop essential skills for participating in other sports during the winter and spring seasons. The sport of football provides opportunities for students with any skill and size. The relationships, bonds, and camaraderie built both on and off the field will last a lifetime. The health and safety of students is a paramount goal of high school football. Like other contact sports, there is an inherent risk in playing football. However, the NFHS wants parents to know that we believe high school football is safer today than it ever has been. The following steps have been taken to create a safer high school football experience. Concussion awareness and management protocols for football. Education and professional development for football coaches. Football injury surveillance and research studies. Restrictions on helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact hits and blindside blocks. Limits on contact in football practice. Risk minimization focus by the NFHS Football Rules Committee. Ongoing improvements in football equipment. Emergency action plans and AEDs in place and ready to use in schools nationwide. As it has been for many years, high school football continues to be a significant part of communities across the country. The NFHS is committed to keeping the lights on and keeping the game as safe as possible for the millions of kids who will play for years to come. Contact your local middle school or high school to learn more and sign up to play football today. Dragon Stadium as Lake Orion will start with possession. In from halftime, Jamie, how was your halftime? Fairly good, I'd say. <laughs> fairly good, fairly good. It was a simple 10 minutes. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I've never heard both frigid and damp used in the same time. Because, I mean, when I think frigid, I think, like, so cold that there is no liquid. But, I mean... Hey, all i got to say, pure Michigan, Jamie. I mean, pure hey, Michigan. it feels both frigid and damp, so I'll roll with it. We have a 9-3 to three, uh, game on our hands here, excuse me. Lake Orion in the lead over Macomb, Dakota. Back out. Here's Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes trying to create. Gives it back out to Andrew Parker. Parker over to Vasquez. Vasquez makes his move. He shoots and it's just off and that'll go out of play. So we're seeing with this Macomb Dakota team here, they started off 0-3, but they're recently on a two-game winning streak. They're trying to extend that to three here tonight with some big wins against Lansing Catholic 16-6 and Port Huron 10-5. Jamie, we've seen this multiple times throughout sports where you may not have the start that you want to a season, but you end up having a pretty decent season. Absolutely. I mean, it's always nice to get off on the right foot and, you know, start off strong, but, I mean, it's not necessary. Sure, it's... He just lost a stick. That somehow distracted me. Uh, it's nice to start off strong, but it's really how you end it that's ma yeah. that matters. I mean, we've seen many teams, like, as you've said, who, sure, they don't start off strong, but they end it and go on to do big things at the end of the season. Like, like the Lions last year. Absolutely the Lions. Started off really shaky, went on to almost be a playoff contender and yeah. to crush the hopes of everyone in the state of Wisconsin. And they sent out Aaron Rodgers, which sent was a him big to moment. New York. Good riddance. Here come the Coug aforementioned Cougars. Number four, Aiden Kreiter with the ball. Here is Carter Cole. Back on to Kreiter. Kreiter would give it out to Noah Erickson. Erickson over to Alex Carr. Carr over to Jake Brender. Brender back to Carr. Carr will give it out to Kreiter. Kreiter trying to get past his defenders. He will. Out of the wrong angle, he'll give it up. Here's Call. Call to Kreiter. Kreiter will shoot. It's off the goalpost right there. But picked up by Call. Call out to Brender. Brender over to Carr. <laughs> Carr over to Kreiser. Kreiser, he'll shoot. That's just off, and that'll hit the the, the football uh, cross or goal post there, excuse me. Can't find my words this evening. It's quite chilly here in the press box. 
little slippage right there behind the goal. Call. Takes one right to the helmet there. Shot on goal from Kreidiser, and that's off. Good save there by Gerritsen. And flag Vasquez. Is, flag is on the field. There is a flag. So much going on. It's sometimes hard to uh, notice those flags down in the corner of the field. But I was going to say, especially because it it's thrown in the corner. You're, that's not where you're looking. You're looking at the small circle around the goal where basically the entirety of both teams are at <laughs> once. It's it, it looks like a game of Twister. Everybody's just all yeah. jumbled up trying to either get the ball in the goal or keep it out of the goal. So it can be sometimes hard to notice that little piece of yellow fabric. Playing catch right now. Number five, Noah Erickson. And number three, Carter Cole. Another shot on goal right there. Just bounces above the goal, and that'll roll right out of bounds. So Dakota's strategy, which I don't know how much I like right now, seems to really be just throw the ball at the goal enough times and eventually <laughs> it'll go in. It, it, it's, it's worked like, three times here. It's it worked has worked three, three times. times. So, I mean, it, it really is like playing a game of darts in yeah. the dark. You just keep throwing. I mean, eventually it's going to go in. Event eventually you'll hit that bullseye. Uh, it, it, it's the Shakespeare uh, monkey paradox. Yeah. It's if you put enough sh monkeys at a typewriter <laughs> for an infinite amount of time, they will eventually write a work of Shakespeare in its entirety. It may take them literal aeons, but it will happen. Good save from Garrison there. Jamie, never change. Your <laughs> I anecdotes don't plan and stories on are the best. <laughs> Loose ball here. Bat around multiple people. And ultimately will be taken by Noah Erickson. Erickson, he'll get it right back out. To Critus here. Over to Trey Edwards, who just recently checked in. Kreidiser loses it. Loose ball will be picked up right there. That looks to be number 30. Dylan, or excuse me, 30, Dom Novak. Physical down near the goal, near the crease. We got a whistle right there on the field. And we got a timeout right here. 9 to 3 Lake Orion over Dakota 6 and 57 left to go here in the third. More high school games than ever before can be seen live every week on the MHSAA TV website. The school broadcast program continues to grow with more and more schools using the NFHS Network's automated production solution, Pixelot, to show both regular season and postseason games. Check it out at MHSAA that TV. That pixel lock camera doing wonders sometimes when I need to catch a game on the fly. Sometimes. Other times it looks like it's looking at the exact opposite side of the field where anything's going on. It's it's a real give or take system, folks. It's a real give or take system. But at the end of the day, it is better than nothing, and really, that's what matters, I say. We are back here live, NFHS Network ONTV here for you. Dragon Stadium during a timeout. And, Jamie, we're seeing a lot of physicality in this game, aren't we? Absolutely. From both sides, they are – They we were talking earlier about the aggressiveness, but I think this quarter has especially showed it, that these teams are willing to go tooth and nail. Yeah. I mean, because Dakota is trying to get to the positives. and Yeah, for the first time this season. And – Lake Orion is trying to keep up their tremendous, I mean, not necessarily a streak because it has been interrupted, but they have had a really good season and they They've are trying. They've had a lot of W's. Absolutely. And season. they have been trying to keep the victories up. Mm -hmm. So both teams see this as a very important game overall for their season. So it, it makes it's, sense. It's, for, it's the momentum's sake. You know, Absolutely. Any, any sport you watch, but you really keep, when you look at lacrosse, momentum is key, especially when you're playing as a team. You want to keep the ball rolling. You don't want to have any roadblocks because that's just going to make everything slower and it's going to hurt morale. Vasquez gives it over to Winter. Parker's got it. Down low, shot on goal. He scores! Luke Gannon add another one to his tally tonight. Four. What a game from him. Double digits for Lake Orion, 10-3. to three. 
fourth of the night. Fourth Luke goal. Impressive Gannon. game from Luke Gannett. Man Something we is need to appreciate here. He is a firebrand. I love that. A firebrand. Yes. I mean, he is. He's a maverick. He is just unstoppable, really. I mean, tonight he is. And he's one of their, one of their main uh, offensive guys next to uh, uh, Sam Haynes, Andrew Parker. I mean, you even see him, uh, uh, Jackson Vasquez mm -hmm. uh, really get into it tonight. And uh, Jamison Ray here at center field to take the faceoff. And he comes up with it again. You've seen him come up with a lot of those here tonight. Jamison Ray here. Makes a tremendous run. It is. So Lake Orion will have possession. Just under 6 and 20 here to go in the third. Lake Orion looking at, to add on to already sizable lead. Parker's got it. Parker trying to break free, and it'll just go over the head. Number 39, Cole Grone. Vasquez has it. Gives it over to Parker Gannon. Parker Gannon looking to get past his defender. Gives it up to Vasquez. Vasquez kind of loses his foot in there. He'll give it back out to Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes looking to get past his defender. Some physical action right there. Andrew Parker just goes over his head. Scooped up by Parker Gannon. Gannon. Back down. And the Licorne's being very patient, you're seeing today, too. Very patient. Not trying to force anything. Not trying to rush anything. Absolutely. I mean, while it is good to be aggressive, there are times where you just have to go through the motions, let things ride, and eventually something will come of it. Another flag on the field, but they'll continue to play. And as I say that, there's a whistle. Of course. <laughs> hey, it's just like in... What was it? Was it the first quarter? Yes, it was the first quarter with Dakota's first goal. Right? I was talking yeah, about how yeah. their, I couldn't tell exactly what their offense was doing. Well, apparently their offense was off getting a goal. Right. <laughs> so that's some substitutions here on the field. So it'll be a slashing penalty. One minute penalty, that is. Oof. Not a pretty foul there. Power play of sorts here for Lake Orion. Andrew Parker. Back up to Kyle Winter. Or to Vasquez. Parker Gannon out to Vasquez. Andrew Parker. Back out Parker. He'll shoot. He'll score! Andrew Parker making 11 to 3 Lake Orion. Lake Orion's offense is heating up here in the second half. His second of the night. Andrew Parker. We were talking to a local safe ed. His dad, Brian Gannon, earlier today. And he said two of their main offensive guys, as we keep alluding to, is Sam Haynes and Andrew Parker. And you're seeing it here today on the goal. And also, Luke Gannon, he's gotten a lot of goals here tonight as well. As that looks to be Alec Fisher, Alec Fisher excuse me, on the faceoff. Can't quite corral. Loose ball, and Lake will have it. That's number 13, Logan Little. Ball on the ground, and we got a whistle on the field here. And they're going to say, keep on going. Almost looks similar to a Looney Tunes brawl. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> it was just everybody in a single ball. So it'll be a Cougar possession here. Carter Cole behind the net. Gives it out. Alex Carr. And that'll go out of play right there. For the Cougars. Cougars possession and the ball will go right past Kreidiser. 
And they'll say it's Lake Orion's possession here. Some substitutions. Lake Orion has it. Number 39, Cole Grohn. He'll have it behind the net, 3 and 20 to go here in the third. He'll give it up to number 27, Joseph Debrinkit. Number 11, Zach Jones has it. He'll give it out to Debrinkit. Here comes Debrinkit. He'll shoot, and that'll be a good save right there by the goalie, Dylan Porter. Here come the Cougars. Kreitiser, we're calling his name a lot tonight. He's been very active on the offensive end. Kreitiser, he'll give it up to Carr, Alex Carr. The sophomore playing up here on, off, on varsity. He'll give it back to Cole. Call to Carr. Carr will lose it. Ball's loose, and the ball will fly back behind the goal. And that sounded like a whistle down from the field. Might have been the soccer game going on behind. Probably the soccer game going on behind us. Call, and he'll just throw it out, and it'll go to the Lake Orion side of the, uh, of the sideline. It'll be Lake Orion ball. So Lake Orion, this is their fourth game of a five-game homestand. Lots of home games in a row here for Lake Orion. Then they hit the road, but homestands are quite important when you're trying to build something here. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the thing about home games is I feel like they impact morale a lot more than yeah. away games because it's one thing to lose. It's another thing to lose on your home turf. Yes. But it's the opposite it's way around It's a sense of well. pride almost. Yes, and it's the exact other way. It's one thing to win away, but it is also... It's one thing to win away, to go to somebody else's stadium and win there. But it is also something to win on your own ground in front of your fans. It's it's a good morale booster. It is. It's a sense of pride, too, winning on your... It's your field. It's your home. This is where I go to school, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it it means right a there. lot. Number 30, Dylan Porter. The Lake Orion bench is getting into it here. I was going to say, there we have it with the um, the home stands going is. a bit wild. Number five, Noah Erickson. Double team, lose Knocked the ball. Out. It'll be scooped up there by the Dragons. That's number six, Parker Gannon. Gannon, and he will get taken down there using the stick. Here comes Call. Call. Out. Mishandled again there by Kreitiser. Kreitiser. He'll load up. He'll shoot. And a good save right there by Brady Gerritsen. He's had a lot of great saves here tonight. Andrew Parker. He's got it. Five seconds. Three seconds. Two. One. And that will end. The third quarter here at Dragon Stadium. 11 to 3, Lake Orion on top of Dakota. Going into the fourth. We'll be Eight back after lead. this. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted, games aren't pre scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game, we never have a perfect game, 
but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. We're back here at Dragon Stadium, 11 to three, Lagorian with an eight point advantage right here over Dakota. We're in our final 12 minutes of lacrosse here, Jamie. What have you seen so far here tonight that's really given the Dragons the edge? Forwards. Forwards. Luke Gannon. Luke Brady Gannon Gerritsen. an impressive game. Luke Gannon, Brady Gerritsen, that's what I have to say. Gerritsen has been perfect in the net. Yeah. He's only let in three goals. And I mean, that's a sizable number. Yeah. Like, compared to how many shots Dakota has made, only letting in three is impressive. And, I mean, Luke Gannon's got, what, four, four goals. six goals, five goals, possibly? Five goals. I, I don't know if that was Luke or Parker. <laughs> I just oh, wrote, Jamie. I just Our wrote statistician, down, Jamie Fanning, everybody. I just wrote down Gannon, not real, for some reason forgetting that there are brothers on this team. <laughs> so the Cougars will win the faceoff here. Jake Ferguson will start off the fourth quarter here at Lake Orion High School. Glad you can join us here on NFHS Network and ONTV. Anthony Schulte, Jamison Fanning here live with you in the press box. As we've got an entertaining game on our hands, Lake Orion seemingly taking care of business, but anything can happen. It is oh, high school sports. Absolutely. There was a game last year I was commentating with uh, Dawson Wolf. It was the one and only Dawson Wolf. The only now at Oklahoma. Now at Oklahoma, yes. It was us versus Rochester Adams, and Adams started off with a, an impressive lead. Yeah. And yet the Dragons came back, and we won it in overtime with golden goal rules. So I mean, you can see anything happen in the twelve minutes of a final quarter in lacrosse. You really can, and in, in any sport, really. Oh, you absolutely. Can never count out a team. Good saves up there in the crease. The Cougars will end up with it. Get it down to Ferguson. Over to Carr. Pick it up. Another shot on goal right there. And that will go out of play. I was going to say, um, with what you were saying about don't count any team out, it made me think of last year's NFL season. The oh. Minnesota Vikings. The ah, largest yes. deficit in yeah. NFL history. 33 points down against Indianapolis. Uh -huh. Somehow Didn't Jonathan Taylor get hurt that game too? I believe so. Yeah. And they come back to win it. Yeah, my fantasy team hurt from that one. <laughs> that was a terrible first overall pick if I do say so myself. <laughs> but I it, finally get the first overall pick and it's Jonathan Taylor, of course. But that game shows that anything can happen yeah. in the world of sports. It's not, it's not a science. You can look at statistics. You can look at probabilities, mm -hmm. but... Things are just going to happen the way they happen, and you just have to roll with them. Right. Lake Orion will send in some more substitutions here. Resuming play, it'll be Cougar Ball. Ball, excuse me, as Kratosir will miss that shot on goal. There's the clock. We'll start running once more. And that ball will go out of play. So we're seeing a lot of balls go out of play here this game. I'm noticing at least. Absolutely. I mean, I've also seen a lot of shots on goal that weren't yeah, really that yeah. close and just gone over. So it seems like with, especially with Dakota, with the desperation of mm -hmm. there are 10 minutes left. You are eight goals down. You're mm -hmm. getting close to the point where you'd have to make a goal a minute to come back and win. Right. Well, I mean, we saw it. Earlier in this game, they were scoring in 30-second bunches. Absolutely. So it is possible, but it's definitely one of those things where the pressure starts to get to you, especially with them trying to get into the positives with their record, that at some point, you just got to start trying things and hoping it sticks. Aaron Lights with that last shot on goal just went out. Lake Orion will have possession down on their side. Behind the goal right here is Andrew Parker. Parker. He'll try to give up to Haynes. Loses it. He'll retain it. Parker. Over to Zach Jones. Zach Jones now. Trying to get past his defender. He will. Good move right there. 
Shot on goal, and he'll score! Lake Orion, one more for him. Zach Jones, it's 12 to three, Lake Orion. So the offense isn't stopping even getting into the latter part of this game here. Eight and 44 are left to go in the fourth. 12 to three, nine point lead. Now we have gotten to the point where Dakota needs a goal. Less than a goal less per than minute. every minute. But not less than a goal per less, minute. You, a goal know, you for guys less know than I mean. a minute. I know what you mean. But definitely, it's getting to that point of desperation where you just need to start trying things. Yeah. Because you can't be patient anymore at this point in the game. No. patience. All patience is going to do is wane down your time yeah. and give LO a better chance of winning. So... You just need to start being insanely aggressive and just throwing at the goal, hoping it gets in. Kreidiser, he's got it. He'll lose it, and it'll be scooped up by Lake Orion. Not what you want to see if you're Dakota at this moment. Lake Orion, it's number 15, Carson Negri. He'll give it up to Hunter Swadish, and that ball will go out of play. So good little disruption there from the, for, for the Dragons. Just at this point, trying to play as physical and as much defense as you can to try and steal as many possessions as you can. Absolutely. At this point, Lake Orion really doesn't need to score. I mean, of course they're going to yeah. try and score more because every bigger lead is better. But at this point, just holding on to the ball and having possession is detrimental to Dakota. And another miscue right there. Brady Gerritsen will scoop it up. What a game. What a goalie. What a goalie. Actually, excuse me, Elena Narlock is in the game now. That is my apologies. I didn't so, realize we had a goalie swap. Elena Narlock in the game. And look, she did a great job right there. And that's another goal! Number 16, Hunter Swadish. It's a double-digit lead for the Dragons with 7 and 20 left to go in regulation. Good stuff from the Dragon offense here and the Dragon defense. Take it another possession and take an advantage on the other end. Great Absolutely. Job. This is a terrifying lead for this point in the game. This is this is exactly the opposite of where the Cougars want to be, especially with what their record has been like so far. And I'd also like to go back to our goalie, uh, Elena, who is the only girl on the team. And that just shows, especially with a seasoned coach like Coach Hebert, how good she is at the sport of lacrosse. Absolutely. Here we go with the Cougars. They are getting to a point of desperation, you'd almost feel like, down double digits with seven minutes left to go. And you've seen it with recent games from the Cougars. They've been playing good defense. They only gave up six points and five points during this little mini winning streak they've kind of put together here. But then they go out and they give up 13 here to Lake Orion. So it's like, Good well, I have there. said that it's been hard to discern their strategy. This is the point where strategy just starts to break down. Yeah. Because there's no time to strategize. Big hit from Alec Fisher. Wow. And there's the flag. I was about to say. Ref, uh, ref tried to pull it out there. Couldn't quite do it the first time. I was confused. I was about to say I'm surprised the ref allowed that. Alec Fisher, no, he's they known didn't. for those big hits on this team, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It would appear that that one was a bit too big, though. I mean, especially right by the ref. <laughs> True. If you're going to try that, which you shouldn't, at least try and do it somewhere where it's not going to be as easy to tell. Not right in front of the referee's eyes. That's not going to go over well. And he promptly gets subbed out with 6 and 17 left. A major swap here for the Dragons. Lots of guys coming in. So it will be Cougar Ball. Uh, not even subbed out. He is actually out on a penalty right now. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Because we are currently at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight players. We are down one man. So that will be a penalty. That, <laughs> that, that being Alec. That being Alec. And that will be a goal right there. For Dakota, number three, Carter Call. So here they go. Here they start coming. Let's see if they can add some more goals onto this uh, to take away from this deficit here 
that they've kind of they've kind of I'd say they they've dug their own their own grave at this point. Somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. I do definitely believe that a lot of the dragon's goals have been able to come from taking advantage of mm -hmm. some misplay. Some it's mis mostly been yeah. taking advantage of misplays that the Cougars made on offense yeah. and then turning that into a counterattack and a mm -hmm. goal. That's what I think has been Elo's big strategy this game, and it's worked wonders. And where the Cougars have kind of shot themselves in their own foot. Yeah. A little bit of aggressive, uh, aggression right there from number 34, Dom DeMesa. Whistle blown, Lake Orion's ball. So here come the Dragons. Joseph Diani has the ball. He'll give it up here. Taking things slow. I mean... Patience right now, yeah. Sam it makes Hayes. sense. They have a nine-point lead at this moment. They don't need to take things fast. Yeah. If anything, they're just trying to wear down the clock, you know, eat into time that Dakota could be using to attempt to make a comeback. It makes perfect sense, as not exciting as it may be. <laughs> Andrew Parker now with the ball. He'll be patient there in that dragon head zone. Out to Sam Haynes. Sam Haynes, he's going to pass it cross field there. To Kobe Narlock in that ball. We'll get turned over to Dakota. In the waning minutes of this contest here, let's see if Dakota can make some noise coming down to their own, to the Dragons' defensive side. I'm not going to say it's impossible for Dakota to win, but it does seem highly unlikely. So at this point, I think what they're mainly doing is attempting to make it a smaller loss because mm -hmm. that's all. That's still going to be better for morale for the team if they. It's going to be. It's still going to be better if they take say a 13 to seven loss than a yeah. 13 to four. That's going to hurt and sting a lot less after their two game winning streak. Trent Edwards on that last shot for the Cougars. Another missed opportunity right there on a shot from Carter Cole. So just a couple missed opportunities here towards the end. A couple shots on goal just missing for the Cougars. Absolutely. I mean, I think part of that is just due to the lack of time. Mm -hmm. They don't have as much time to, like, strategize as much, take more accurate so shots. They need to just take shots. They are in a race against the clock, and time is not on their side in the slightest. It's a nine-point game, just under four minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Alex Carr. He'll give it up to Trey Edwards. Edwards, a shot on goal. And that'll go out of bounds. As the rains kind of looks to have stopped here. Which I feel like the weather could have been a factor to some of these teams' game plans tonight. Absolutely. I mean, because you never know exactly what you're going to be going into. Because mm -hmm. it's a lot different playing on a dry field yes. when it's sunny out than here with a dark, dreary, damp evening. Very chilly evening at that. <laughs> Extremely chilly. The press box isn't that warm. We have open windows. The press box is not that warm, folks. If you, if you hear my voice trembling, it is because I am a little chilly up here in the press box with 3 and 15 left to go. And the ref will start the clock right back up. But I will say, at least compared to the people in the stands and the players, we are at least dry. Yes. It is nice in that regard in here. Alex Carr. Yep, a shot on goal. Trey Edwards, and he'll score. Trey Edwards. Don't call it a comeback. 13-5, Lake Orion on top. Dakota trimming down that lead ever so slightly. Hey, every goal helps, helps towards making every this goal defeat matters. hurt a little bit less. Just a little less. <laughs> every little bit makes it feel a little bit better. 
Just under three minutes left to go here. 13 to five, Lake Orion. Face-off, Jamison Ray, who's been excellent in that face-off all night here tonight. Absolutely. Proud to share a name with that man. <laughs> yes. Maybe spelled differently, but I can feel the connection. And he'll win once more. Jamison Ray. He's a beast one-on-one. -on -one. The speedy Jamison Ray. Here he comes. And we got a timeout here for Lake Orion. 2-46. and 46. Lake Orion up 8. 13-5. Where can you find good information on all kinds of topics related to the well-being of our student-athletes? Check out the Health and Safety page on the MHSAA website. Learn about multi-sport participation, heat and hydration, cardiovascular resources, as well as insurance benefits available for students. It's all on the Health and Safety page of the MHSAA.com. I'm going to tell you, I could definitely use some help with the heat and hydration with me going to Arizona State after the end of the school and year. Congratulations on that, being accepted into Arizona State. Hey, thank you very there. much. Decision day just yesterday. Mm -hmm. 2 and 46 as we are in the midst of a timeout for Lake Orion. Ron Hebert calling that timeout. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he is the winningest coach in Michigan high school lacrosse history. He's at 319 right now. He won it with 313, and he's looking to make it 320 Absolutely. here in about 2 minutes and 46 seconds of game time. One can only imagine how it feels to be in that position. Right. Especially with also having a really strong season this year. It must be really gratifying to feel that like all your work throughout your life is now... Oh, yeah culminating in something like this. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. I got you, Jamie. I got you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Very special team Lake Orion has this season, looking to improve to 9-2. and two. Lake Orion playing the patience game here. Clock management is key. Hunter Swadish got the ball now. Swadish Gives it up to Kyle Winter. Winter will get tripped, it looks like, there. And the Cougars will retain possession. Just about two minutes left to go here in this fourth quarter. Time slowly running out here for the Cougars. Number 36... Aiden Morse with the ball here. Gives it over to Jake Ferguson. Ferguson down. Ball's now behind the net. Carter Cole. Sean go over there. Good save right there by Elena Narlock. An excellent goalie in the crease for the Dragons. She'll send that downfield. Secured by Debrinket. Debrinket, he'll shoot, and he'll score! Why not one more as time runs out? Add on to that lead. It's a nine-point lead, 14-5, to five, Lake Orion. Joseph Debrinket, that's a goal. That's got to hurt for Dakota. Oh, yeah. Having... Like, having Norlock... Send the ball up to Dabrinkit. Dabrinkit just runs with it and ends up getting a goal just like that with really... It, it looked... seems to be the dagger almost. In the the dagger in the heart. heart, really, yeah. Like the final nail in the coffin, so yes. to say. He, he did it with almost, I want to say, like, no competition. Like, nobody really the stopped him. The of Lake Warren hasn't really been contested tonight, has it? It hasn't. They've just been going and... Dakota's been struggling to defend against them. Here again. There it is. Good play there by Alec Fisher. He'll try to get a shot on goal. Almost goes in just over the head of the goalie right there. And into their net. Just under 30 seconds here. Getting really physical there at midfield. And there's the flag. 
with just seconds left to go in this game. And it's safe to say the Dragons are going to leave Dragon Stadium here tonight with a victory. Stoppage of play for that flag. 6.7 seconds. Going to be honest, don't know what's going to happen in 6.7 seconds. Hey, anything is possible. You're right, you're right. This is true. In all seriousness, this game looks to be just about over, I'd say. In all but name, really. Maybe just look to play out this final 6.7 seconds here. It looks like Ron Hebert will be adding his, one, his 320th today. And as the clock strikes zero, Lake Orion will take a 14-5 victory over Macomb, Dakota. Jamie, what a good, aggressive, offensive game from the Dragons this is, we just saw. This is what I said before the game started, exactly what we needed. We needed an aggressive offense, but especially backed up by a strong and firm defense, and that is exactly what we got tonight. It's exactly what we want to see now, and it's what we want to see for the rest of the season. We want to see Lake Orion able to to push them around, to be able to get yeah. goals, but we also want to see them to be able to respond when they're the ones put on the back foot, which that's what we got tonight. Aggression and offense, the name of the game for the Dragons. It leads to a 14-5 victory. Well, folks, thank you for watching this presentation of Dragon Sports. Tonight's game is a copyrighted broadcast of Dragon Broadcasting, the NFHS Network, and ONTV. For our wonderful broadcast crew and my partner, Jameson Fanning, I'm Anthony Schulte saying so long and good night. You have been watching Lake Orion Dragons Lacrosse on the NFHS Network.